Hello everyone and welcome to the Arma Statues Data Pack tutorial. My name is Sol and you may know me from my Arma stand creations such as Soul Scream the Crystal Dragon as well as Jonathan the Flower Peacock. In this tutorial video, I'll be going a little bit more in-depth into the controls of the Armour Stand book as well as offer you some tips and tricks so that you can make amazing creations like mine. I would assume that most of the viewers of this video have at least a basic understanding of how the Armour Stand book works. However, I will still be running through some of the basics of the Armour Stand book. If you would like a full beginner's tutorial on the Armour Stand book, I highly recommend looking at Zombie Cleo's original Armour Stand tutorial for beginners, which I will link in the video description below. So, without further ado, let's get started on the video. So let's start with a brief summary of the basics. You would need a book and quill, and also an Armour Stand. Get your book and quill, and write a few random words in the book. Sign the book as statues, and ta-da, you have your armor statues book. Then all you have to do is place down an armor stand and you can start interacting with it. Now, before interacting with this armor stand, here is tip number one. If you are playing on single player or if you are testing out an armor stand creation on a creative world, I highly recommend opening your world to a local area network. However, if you're playing on the server, you can ignore this little tip. Now, the reason why we would want to do that is when we especially adjust the pose of an armor stand and immediately follow up with another adjustment, the second trigger will usually never process unless you are on the server. Now, this is because every time you interact with the book, everything on the outside is actually frozen in time. So, when you actually open your world to a local area network, then everything is no longer frozen in time and you can see that the chat also starts to disappear. This will make every single command that you put in processed. So now let's run through some of the basics really quick. We can remove the base plate, we can show arms, we can make the stand small, we can turn off gravity for armor stands. We can make them invisible. And we can display name tag armor stands. And next, if you want to move the armor stand, you can use nudge. The top X, Y, and Z represents the X, Y, and Z axis in relation to your world, whereas the X and Z axis in the middle represents the X and Z axis in relative to where you are standing or where the player is standing. For instance, now the sun is in the east, which is the positive X axis. So if I use positive X, 8, it will move towards the sun. However, in relation to me, if I want the armor stand to move to the right hand side, if I press positive X, it will move that way. In using the nudge position, you would most often use the Y axis for the top row and the X and Z axis in the middle rows. You would rarely use relative exact except in very niche cases, which I will discuss later in the video. Next, you can also adjust the rotation of the armor stand through this line right here. This will rotate the armor stand as well as set the constant for the pose adjustment angle. You can also make a certain part of the armor stand point to either the head or the feet of the armor stand. There are also presets where you can make the armor stand pose in positions, which is very convenient for making quick armor stand scenes. This is where you adjust all the positions of the armor stand posing. You can also align the item to be on a surface or flat on the surface. You can align blocks the same way as well. And you can also hang tools on a rack. 
You can also set the armor stand to swap the item from its main hand to its off hand and also have it bring the item from its main hand to the head. You can also copy the pose from one armor stand, paste it to another armor stand and also flip the position of the armor stand so you get this result. And then you can also mirror the position of the right hand side to reflect on the left hand side. And lastly, once you're happy with your armor stand creation, never forget to lock your creation. However, if you forget where your armor stand is, you can always click on check target and it will highlight the position of your armor stand. And then you can proceed to lock your armor stand so that you won't mess up your creations. Another thing worth mentioning in the armor stand book is that it also includes invisible item frames. You can make the item frame invisible or you can also try and align the item flat on the surface. However, do take note that if you use the armor stand to align the item, it is actually slightly above ground. Whereas if you use the item frame, it is inside the block. And that now covers most of the basics of the Armour Stand book. Now let's go in-depth into more of the controls of the Armour Stand itself. And now before we go in-depth into the controls of the Armour Stand, let's go to tip number two. Whenever you make big sculptures like mine, always do these three settings first. Go under Styles, make sure that the arms are showing, then also make sure that gravity is always off. Then go under presets and set the armor stand to attention. The reason why we would want the armor stand in the attention position is because the arms, the head and the legs of the armor stand will be straight compared to the default position. This will make positioning the armor stand very much easier in the long run. So now let's start the in-depth discussion of the controls of the book. Let's start with the nudge page. As I mentioned earlier, the XYZ on the top part of the page represents the XYZ axis of the world. So I've gone ahead and marked out the X, Y, and Z axis of this world. This arrow points towards the positive X axis. This arrow points towards the positive Z axis. And this arrow points upwards towards the positive y-axis. So if we were to place down an armor stand right now and have it move towards the positive x direction, which will be pointing this way, we would expect it to move towards my right. Like so. And this will happen regardless of where I'm standing in the wall. So even if I'm standing on the left hand side of the armor stand and it moved to the right hand side earlier, this time when I press positive X, it will instead move backwards towards the positive X direction. And so this rule applies the same for the Z axis as well as the Y axis. And this is why there is no Y axis on the second row. This is because the y-axis in relation to where you're standing would stay the same. Okay, so let's discuss relative aligned. Relative aligned depends on where the player is standing with the armor stand. So let's say I want the armor stand to move to the right hand side. If we look at this page, you would see that there is only the X and Z axis. Positive X represents the right hand side. Negative X represents the left hand side. Positive Z means that the armor stand will move towards the player. Negative Z means that the armor stand will move away from the player. So if I want the armor stand to move to my right hand side, I would press positive X. And this is in relation to where the player is standing with the armor stand. So if I stand in this position, it will move to the right hand side, which is this way, in contrast to moving towards the positive X axis, like so. Now what if we look away from the armor stand? It will still be the same. It depends on where the player is standing. 
So if I want the armor stand to move to the right hand side, it will move towards this direction even if I'm facing away from the armor stand. And it will also move towards me if I press positive X even if I'm facing away from the armor stand. Which brings me to tip number three. Whenever you're working with a large amount of armor stands, it can be very difficult to look away from the armor stand you're working on and accidentally interact with other armor stands on the sides. So what you can do is instead of trying to look to the left or to the right of the armor stand, you can actually look away from the armor stand and still be able to interact with it. Now, let's go into the really niche part of the nudge position page, which is relative exact. Now, we will rarely use relative exact except in very, very specific situations. One thing that relative exact can do for you is help you move the armor stand in diagonal directions. And as far as I know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the armor stand will move in relation from the middle of the player to the middle of the armor stand. So say if I want to move it at a 45 degree angle like this towards the back, I would do this and it would move 45 degrees to the back. However, one side effect of this, which is very interesting, is if you actually pillar up, you can also have the armor stand move down a little bit. So if I have it move away from me again, like what I did earlier, it will also move down into the ground. As I mentioned, this can be used in very niche situations, however, you'll be using this very rarely as you will be using a combination of the other nudge position functions. Alright, and now we enter the most headache inducing part of the armor stand book, which is the pose adjustment page. Now, before we go into what all of these mean, something very important for everyone to understand. All of these parts move based on where their axis or joints are. So, if we look at the armor stand here, the joint or the axis of this arm is actually on the shoulder here and the same for the other side. And for the legs, it's on the hips of the armor stand. For the body and the head, it is over here on the neck. And if that's not clear enough, I made a large armor stand to illustrate where the joints are. So again, the joint or the axis for the arm is on the shoulders. For the legs, they're on the hips, and for the body and the head, it is over here on the neck. Now this is important to know because every single time you move any part of the body, it moves around that joint. So if I want to move the arm, it's going to move around this point. For the sake of clarity, I'll be proceeding with this next section with some technical words. I'll be referring to these points as joints and I'll be referring to the arms, the legs, the body and the head as appendages. So now, how do we use these controls to pose our armor stand? I've prepared a couple of illustrations here in the back to help you better understand how it works. The diamond block in the center represents the joint. For the X control, it will move the appendages around the sagittal plane. For instance, if we have an arm or an appendage that is pointing downwards like this, when we interact with the X control of the book, we would expect the arm to move either this way or this way along this plane. For the y-axis, it will move an appendage along the transverse plane. So for instance, if we have an appendage that is horizontal like this and we interact with the y-control, it will move the arm or the appendage either to that side or this side. However, if the appendage is pointing downwards like this, it will rotate the appendage to this side or this side. For the Z control, it will move the appendage along the coronal plane. 
So if we have an appendage that's pointing downwards like this, when we interact with the Z control, it will move the appendage this way or this way along this plane. So now that we've more or less understood how the X, Y, and Z controls the armistand, let's give it a try. I'll give everyone a relatively easy way to remember how the X, Y, and Z controls position the armistand. Let's start with the arms. The X control will move the arm along the sagittal plane, like so. So, following this principle, we would expect the arm to move either this way or that way. But an easy way to remember it is that the X controls whether the arm raises up or whether it goes to the back. So, if we press on positive X, we would expect the arm to raise up or to cause shoulder flexion. And if we press negative X, we would expect the arm to go backwards or to cause shoulder extension. Next, let's look at the Y control. We know that the Y control moves around a horizontal plane or transverse plane. Now, if you remember nudge position for the X axis, we know that positive is always to the right and negative is always to the left. So for Y, it is similar as well. Positive Y will bring the arm this way or inwards towards the body. Negative Y will move the arm this way to the left or outwards from the body. Now, if the arm is pointing downwards like so, it will rotate the arm along the plane. So, if we press on positive Y, it will rotate the arm inwards towards the body or cause shoulder internal rotation. Then, if we press negative Y, it will rotate the arm outwards away from the body or cause shoulder external rotation. And lastly, the Z control will move the arm along this plane. So, the Z control is similar to the X control in that by pressing positive C, it will raise the arm out from the body or cause abduction of the arm. Then, by pressing negative C, it will bring the arm inwards towards the body or cause adduction of the arm. So the pose adjustment for the right arm and the right leg is actually the same. However, the movement or pose adjustment for the right arm is mirrored to the left arm. So that's why it's more useful to remember if the arm raises up or goes down or whether it rotates inwards or outwards rather than remembering how it moves because on the left arm it is completely mirrored and let's demonstrate that really quickly. So we know that positive X raises the arms up. So if we press positive X for the left arm it will raise the arm up. Then we know that positive C also raises the arm up. So for the left hand it will raise the arm up. like that. And lastly, for Y, we know that positive Y will rotate the arm inwards. So if we press on positive Y on the left arm, it will rotate the arm inwards like it did for the right arm. And therefore, the pose adjustments for the left side and the right side is actually mirrored. Alright, so now let's discuss the controls for the head and the body of the armistand. Now this is the part that can throw you off a little bit because the controls for the head and the body of the armor stand is a little bit different from the right hand of the armor stand which you will be using more frequently than any other part of the armor stand. But let's go through this slowly so that we can understand how it works. So first, for the X control of the armor stand, positive X makes the head look upwards. Like so. 
And this is better demonstrated if you actually have a head on the armor stand. So let's give that a try. And now you can see that the head is looking upwards. Negative X, on the other hand, makes the head look downwards. So if we do that, the head will look downwards. Like so. The Y control for the head makes it look either to the left or to the right. Now it's not so clear to see it with an armor stand without the head, so we'll be using this one to test the Y control. Positive Y makes it look towards the right side or the armor stand's left. And negative Y makes it look towards my left side or the armor stand's right side. Like so. Then the Z control will make the head tilt side to side. Now this is the part that's a bit confusing sometimes. However, just remember that positive C will tilt the head towards this side, which is my left. And negative C will tilt the head towards my right. Let's give that a try. Positive C moves the head this way. And negative C will tilt the head the other way. And lastly, for the body of the armor stand, just as how the right side is mirrored to the left side, the body is mirrored from the head. And therefore, if you press positive X, the body will actually move backwards instead of forwards. Like so. And negative X will bring the body forwards. Like that. Then, the Y control is exactly the same as the head. It will turn the body this way, like so, and negative Y will rotate it the other way, like that. For the Z control, it can be a bit confusing. However, positive C will tilt the body this way upwards, like that. And negative C will tilt the body the opposite way, like so. Whew. I hope that lengthy explanation of the controls in the post adjustment page makes it easier for everyone to post their understands. Maybe I could make a little cheat sheet for everyone so that you have easy reference on how to control your understands. Do let me know in the comments if you will be interested in such a cheat sheet and I'll consider making one of it. And now that you know all of the controls of the Armistan book, it is time for you to make a sculpture. Before we proceed with a brief discussion on some tips of making a sculpture, here is tip number four. When you are positioning anything in a sculpture, try using F5 mode. Using F5 mode will help you position your armor stand so that you can make sure that it's actually in position and once you're happy with the position, then you can lock the armor stand. So before you make a sculpture, remember to familiarize yourselves with all the sizes of items that you have to work with. Also remember to differentiate between block items and also items. If you ever get confused or are unsure which is a block and which is an item, you can look at your own player and see if you hold the item as a block or an item. And it will correspond to how the armor stand holds the item. When you work with armor stands, don't be scared to test various items and see what works with each other. While it may look bad at first, eventually you will find ways to make it look better. So I hope you found this tutorial for the Armor Statue Stata Pack useful. As I would always say, once you've mastered the controls, the rest is up to your creativity. Which brings us to the final tip of this video. Remember to have fun when you play Minecraft. All of my sculptures and builds are a result of me having fun while playing the game. And I believe that everybody can also make truly amazing things when you have fun playing the game. This data pack truly opens many different possibilities to build in Minecraft and I hope you have as much fun with the data pack as I did. 
I look forward to seeing all the different creations that the Minecraft community can produce. Also, do check out this clip which I will link in the iCard as well as the end of the video of me messing with some friends using the Armistand book. And as of this recording, I am currently working on a mega project which I am streaming on Twitch. So do consider following me on Twitch to keep up with the series as well as see what I'm working on. And if you miss the stream, you can also watch the VODs which I will upload on YouTube and link at the end of this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, any questions and feedback, and check out some of my old videos on the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Much love from Seoul. Goodbye! Drop it.